Okay, world, how you doing? Uh, we got a line here that we're working on tonight. Um, um, about 12, 12 foot long here. This uh, salad line right here. And uh, major problem. This is about piping stuff wrong. You check this out. They got three EVAPs, 1700 BTUs a piece. And they got a half inch suction line which that half inch should have been run all the way down to the other evap all the way to the third evap this half inch they necked it down right here to three eighths put two three eighths into three eighths into three eighths that is how you do it you run a half inch put a half inch t and a half inch t and then you dump your three eighths if you're going to do three eighths into that you dump your three eighths into that half inch t you run a half inch main line down all the way that way you can get your heat out so major problem so that's that okay <coughs> hey world how you doing uh, that's the evaporator the evaporator that went in do a map half inch line all the way got the 90 on there put a new 90 on there um, K17 uh, super heat uh, access valve and suction going back up to there. Um, okay, up to there. Service valve uh, shut off the system so you can work on it down here. Hold the line solenoid, a little bit of control, got to fix that shit. Uh, but, anyways, there's the whole deal going all the way down there. Half inch suction all the way down the whole bottom. Okay, the left evaporator. Um, and, uh, REM K17A. Okay, um, just look up the drain. Okay, world, how you doing? Um, this part of this video is about, remember in the video where I said, you know, somebody put that half inch 90 and came off, came off half inch 90 and straight piece of half inch and then put 3 eighths T with a piece of 3 eighths going into that straight half inch. What this is about, how many BTUs um, when you're designing your refrigeration system or trying to find out why a refrigeration system won't work. Um, they had three evaporators there that were each 1700 BTUs a piece. So that's uh, basically 2000 BTUs an evap, which that's 6000 BTUs. They were all going in to that 1 3 eighths line. So you got 6000 BTUs trying to be go up to the unit. <clears throat> why it's important about line size is as you'll see in this chart looking at a plus 20 suction um, you're looking at the 3 8 line will only carry 4000 BTUs up to the compressor at a 30 foot line so if you put that little piece of 3 8 into that straight piece in that that T that T can only allow 4000 BTUs and when you have that little straight piece coming off that little straight piece is the bottleneck that can only allow 4000 BTUs into that half inch piece so just if you were to change just that area right there from a half inch straight piece make it a half inch straight piece and make it a half inch T that half inch T can now tear carry 
9,000 BTUs, that half inch piece of pipe. So that's the difference between putting in a half inch T or a 3 8 T. <clears throat> so that's what I'm getting at. And there was three evaporators there um, trying to go into that piece of 3 8 which the th which equals about 6,000 BTUs, which there's no way the heat can get out. So therefore, you're not going to get you might have 6,000 BTUs where the evaporator's down down on the bottom, but it'll never get upstairs to the unit because the maximum amount of BTUs at a plus 20 suction is <clears throat> that 3 8 piece can only allow 4,000 BTUs into it. That's why I did a half inch main line all the way down, which can now carry 9,000 BTUs, and the half inch main line had half inch T's, and so that way it allows the 2000 BTUs piece and that's why the box now will get down they said it would never get down you know below 45 or you know something before um, now it'll do 30 degrees now that I now that you're letting the heat actually get up to the unit because <clears throat> that half inch pipe um, get a plus 20 suction can carry like I said, 9,000 BTUs, um, so it's even undersized, but it, luckily it seems to work. You know, that line set is somewhere between, it's got to be around 100 feet. So the line set actually for the, line set actually should be 5 eighths um, at 100 feet. So that's what the line set per this book, if you're using R22. Then you've got an R404 chart which is plus 20 suction <clears throat> and I believe it's probably similar because the pressures in R22 and R404 are pretty close um, so you got 6,000 BTUs half 5 8 5 8 um, plus 20 suction and you got half 5 8 yeah so it's just it's pretty darn close um, I don't have a chart for like 134A in front of me um, and if you guys are asking what this book is, this book is called Russell Quick Selections, Refrigerated Box Loads and Equipment, Publication, 1997. Um, as you can see, I've had this book for a while. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I've been doing this since 1981, so that's why I have this book. <laughs> so, anyhow. Um, so, anyways, this is something when you start getting into designing your own boxes and you know what uh, what line size you need to double check um, you should always be double checking your uh, people that you know spec this stuff out for you because you know they might make a mistake so you've got you know what size your liquid line should be you know for a certain amount of BTUs you know over here you got a uh, say you want 6,000 BTUs so you go over here and at 100 feet you're gonna need a 3 8 line okay it shows that a quarter inch will work at 60 feet with R22 um, so but it won't work at 100 feet um, I just my line set must be somewhere between 60 and 100 because it seems to work okay <laughs> um, but I'm probably I'm pretty close to on the edge. My evaporators are 1,700 a piece, so it's pretty close to 6,000. So you'll see up at 4,000 quarter inch will work at 100 feet um, for R22 and R404. Um, they're saying for R404 you need three eighths. See what I'm saying? What's well, different, you know? Um, so you have to. And you guys that always like put smaller lines going into expansion valves and stuff like that, um, if the factory could make the inlet and outlet of the <clears throat> TXVs smaller to save money, they would do it. So they don't make it bigger because they want to spend more money. So I just wanted to let you know that you should be piping it to what the inlet size of your expansion valve is. Because obviously that's what size they want 
<clears throat> entering the expansion valve. So that's another thing that you need to take into consideration when you start, you know, uh, trying to figure out what is wrong with systems. And also, what I put in there was, was those RAM, RAMKs. So the RAMK, just what I wanted to let you know what it is. It's a reverse air wall mullion unit cooler, okay? Um, this is a heat craft book that comes with the coolers. Okay, it's really a cool little book. I like to keep all this stuff. And I'm a guy that reads all this stuff. That's how I learned a lot of stuff in this trade. When I first started out, I read every piece of paper that comes with every expansion valve and every, you know, lots of good info. Learned a lot of good stuff. So anyways, a um, little tidbit for you here. Um, R-A-M means reverse airflow. So that's the first three letters there. K means a coated coil. Um, if it didn't have a K, it wouldn't be a coated coil. Um, 13, see the size? That's your 1300 BTUs. See, R-A-M-K, um, 17, if it's an A, it's 115 volt. If it's a B, it's 230 volt, so. And G is the vintage. Um, so, just wanted to show you that these stuff have a, uh, Quite a, quite a lot of good information in them. And um, so there's your, uh, all your, your, there's your height length, all your good dimensions for a drain connection so you know what, you know, stuff to buy, you know, for hooking up to a drain and hoses and everything. Also want to let you know that that same model, that REMK, that's 1700 BTUs. See it at 10 degree TD right here. Um, that's uh, 25 degrees saturated suction temperature, so 25 degrees suction, so 1700 BTUs. But if you go over and use the exact same coil and do a 20 degree suction at a 15 degree TD, you now are removing 2550 BTUs with the exact same coil because that's 15 degree TD. And this is a 10 degree TD. So you've now picked up 30% just in changing your TD on your EVAP, uh, which would be your superheat. Um, so adjust, adjusting your expansion valve, you can change your amount of BTUs that the evaporator is removing from the box. So basically, let's figure this is 1700. This is 30%. This is a 30% increase because uh, 8 goes into 17, let's say uh, 8 and 8 are 16, pretty close. 3 times 8 is 24. So roughly, you're talking 30%, uh, actually a 50% increase, excuse me. So going from 1700 to 2550 you've not you've increased your evaporator removal your heat removal capabilities by 50 percent just changing your TD which can also load your condenser maybe too heavily so maybe your now would be pulling that's two four out of three evaps that'd be two four six. 7,500 BTUs you'd be now bringing up to your condenser. So you need to again, now you revert back to pipe size your pipe, you, now you need if you want to pull that heat out and take use of that you need to now size for 9,000 BTU piping at a plus 20 suction. Okay, so that's what it gets into. That's what, anyways what I wanted to uh, show you a little, touch a little bit about and uh, I'll do another video on on other stuff on sizing condensing units and uh, showing insulating the suctulator. Showing insulating the suction accumulator. I'll try to say that three times fast. I can also put uh, this unit strut here and some salt tape underneath the unit strut. And I'm going to put bolts through here. Okay.
uh, something else I do, guys, is I always put in new fuses. So, got a couple of new 20s in there. Uh, new, new unit gets new fuses. Because the old unit probably stressed the old fuses real bad on the lock rotor, you know? Alright, thanks. Bye.